Hello everybody, it is your boy TwinPlays here, back in another video, hope you guys are doing amazing. So recently we left off with a few more TikToks, and today we are bringing you another tutorial um, based on a claim door. Now this was from a, a subscriber's comment, so I decided to do it because it is a little simple tutorial, um, and I am pretty busy, so I can't focus on other things, but I just wanted to do this little tutorial for you guys. Now if you're new to my channel, feel free to hit the subscribe button and turn on that post notifications, it means so much to me, about like 80% of you guys aren't subscribed, it kind of sucks, but don't worry guys, we're almost at actually 13k which i am so happy about so that's awesome let's hit 20k by at least february um and also join the discord it's in the description we help out people who are new to the community or um to developing and we help out all the people that are having troubles so um let's get right into this so you're gonna go to the description and you're gonna look for the model it's gonna just say link model and then you're gonna get this claim door right here and you're gonna click this and you should be able to just hit try in studio or you're able to download it whatever you want to do um and this will give you the model and you'll be able to put this in your game and use it um, so once you load into your Roblox Studio, your game, you're going to go to Toolbox or you're going to pull into um, View, I mean, sorry, Model and then Model, whatever one works. Um, and you're going to go to Inventory and you're going to click this one right here and it's going to be pasting in this right here. So um, talking about this model, it is pretty simple. Now, as you can see already, there is this thing that says nobody's house and then it's a simple door mailbox, pretty simple. Now talking about this model in here, um, there's just a few things you can really look at and you might be confused. Um, I did actually start it off by, um, using a free model and then I actually edit it and make it much nicer. Um, in here you can feel free to just delete this, it's just, just scrap credits and stuff. Um, but, uh, that's about it. And so we have rig, rig backup, rig the objects and owner handling, owner name, uh, just stuff, and then fence, um, door, mailbox, nobody's house. Now, um, I'm gonna quickly talk about all the scripts and what you can do with them, and then we'll go right into this. So, um, let's actually just quickly test this out so I can show you how this works. All right, so we're basically loading already, and as you can tell, we just have two players, and um, this will have nobody's house, and once you walk up to it, it's going to um, say uh, become owner and then you can hit claim house. Now this is a proximity prompt so this does work for Xbox and mobile and PC. So yes, that's nice. Um, now they're going to be able to hold E and it's going to do a uh, sound that says that they just purchased it. Um, and then once that happens, it's going to change the name to player one's house and that means they own it. So now if I were to check on this one, um, as you can tell, player's one's house and let's say you wanted to enter it. Um, it's not going to let you because there is a sound. Now, you guys may not be able to hear this, but um, there is another sound, so you won't be able to um, you won't be able to get in. Now, actually, let me just change this right here so you can actually hear it. Um, so, just like that, you shouldn't be able to get in. Now, um, if we go to him, um, it will be opening it for you. Now, um, this door is actually from my recent tutorial um, on Vibe. It's uh, basically part of the building kit, just with... Um, it's the same script and it's a click detector one. It is not the proximity prompt, it's a click detector because this is nicer and it's easier to use. But now, let's say you wanted to leave the game. So if player one leaves the game, as in I'm gonna just do this, hit leave, da bada boom. Now what's gonna happen is gonna say nobody house. I'm gonna walk back up to it and this proximity prompt will be enabled again. You're gonna be able to claim it. Dun dun dun, music will go through and bada boom. So basically what this is doing is we are um, getting this model, we're saving it, and we're basically setting it to the player. We're setting the owner as, uh, owner name to the player. Um, and we're gonna check all the scripts and basically see if the owner is there, if there's an owner or not. And if there is an owner, then we're gonna place a name and we're gonna let him be able to um, click and open the door. Now, if the owner leaves, we're gonna just make sure to change this to nobody's house. And then we're also going to change the model and um, enable the uh, proximity prompt. So that's about it. It's pretty simple, you guys. Now, the tech, the scripts are a little confusing, but don't worry about it. We'll get into it. So talking about nobody's house, let's just do this one real quick. This is basically a humanoid um model so it displays the text so you can change this to um, nobody's house you know whatever you want to do i recommend just uh nobody's house um and then you can move this to wherever you want it's not part of the mailbox mailbox is just a model so you're going to get rid of it or do whatever you want to customize with it um your choice now this script basically is a while true do script which is basically going through a loop to just check if there is an owner um if the owner dot value which is this right here equals um this if it is not if it's empty then we are going to set it to nobody's house but if it's not empty right here then we're basically going to be changing the owner value 
I mean, this text to what the owner value is. So that this is the big dependency right here, what we're looking at for all the scripts. So that's about it. Now for the button in proximity prompt, it's actually a little easier. Um, this is the button. You can place this, move it wherever you want. This is the proximity prompt. You can set a certain hold duration, the keyboard key code, and the max activation distance. So you're able to choose that. Um, this is the purchase sound. Feel free to change this to however you like. But in here we have a script. Now this is the main script. This is a little bit um, different. Actually, we have two main scripts in here. Um, three. Um, so we have the debounce, and then we have the owner, which is going to be script dot parent dot parent dot parent dot owner name, and then we have the function on prompt. So what we're doing is when the prompt soon you gets prompt gets gets triggered, then we're going to connect the function, and we're going to be doing this function right here. So if the debounce equals zero, which it should all be already already be, then we are going to check the debounce. Um, local check equals player dot character we're checking their humanoid if their humanoid is found then we're basically going to grab the player um the user if the player has a rig then the user equals um get players um then we get the message which is going to be this proximity action test and we're going to say you already own a house wait a uh, message claim house um so we're basically checking if they um already have this rig now rig is basically what we're going to be putting into the player right here so i'm going to show you so um, if we don't find this rig, um, we're going to be, um, doing this. So this is what it's mainly going to happen first. We're going to get the user, set the owner value to the player name, and then we're going to make an own basically variable as in saying rig, and we're going to set it parent to the user. Now that means they have a little model or something in them that says rig. So it's an, oh, it's an int value. So sorry, a value that's going to be putting them that says rig as in saying they have this rig, like they have this door owned to them. We're going to set a message and it's going to say, you now own this house. Um, and then we're going to play the sound, wait a second, and we're going to disable the proximity prompt so they aren't able to use it. Now, this was part I kind of had troubles with because I didn't know how I should really do this, but I thought this is nicer because click detector, I think, is personally the best. Um, then, basically, what's happening is if they try and go again to do this proximity prompt and it finds the rig, um, then it's going to be doing this. Um, now, you already own house and claim house. Now, on the bright side, you really don't need to even worry about this, to be honest, because um, the dot triggered for the proximity prompt won't go, won't be able to go through as we already enabled the false. Um, but besides that, pretty easy. Um, then we have the door, and let me, let's actually just talk about the door in a second, so you guys can customize this. But um, talking about the objects and owner handling, this is pretty easy. We're basically creating a factory backup to save it and set it to the um, parent of this model. Um, then what we're doing is we're doing this while script. Um, now, if the script is not nil, then we're going to check if the owner value is filled with something. If it is, then navn equals owner value. Now we're going to make a new local variable called lever. So this is what I'm talking about if they leave the game. If they do leave the game, okay, so if they do leave the game, then we're going to set the proximity back to normal. We're going to set the owner value to blank, and then we're going to do that major reset. We're going to basically get the clone of the factory backup as in saying this whole rig and we're going to be putting it back to um, the workspace so it's kind of nice so it's kind of basically duplicating it and putting it back now like I said guys if you want to make more of these um, you can I if I'm right you can actually just duplicate rig and move it over I haven't tried that part yet maybe we can test it out but um, rather than that basically just if that doesn't work, then just do this. I, I forgot, to be honest. Um, but yeah, so simple. So now, talking about the door, um, you can customize this all you want, guys. Like I said, um, this button, don't you worry about. But we have these parts. Like You can just like change the colors, really do whatever you want, be creative. Um, and then we have the click door, which is what I made myself. Um, we have the door one, handle one, handle two. Now, what I'm talking about this is basically you make it um, visible. So see how the transparency is set to one? So now when I go like this, you can see them both. See how that works? Um, so what we're doing is we are, um, okay, so I need to set this back to one. So door one, handle one, uh, handle three, I think too. Uh, do, 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 do. All right, so what we're doing in this click detector script is we're creating a function on function off and if the player clicks the button um, any of these handles then we're gonna do this function on clicked we're gonna check if their owner player dot name equals owner dot value so we're gonna check if they own the door 
if they do, then we're going to play the sound as in the door sound. And then we're going to do off it goes on equals true. And then we have this sound too, which is going to be the lock door sound. So that's what I added to this, which is really nice. And then we do the function on, function off. So if on, is on equals true, then off, else on, end. That's a pretty simple um, on off function. Um, if statement, I mean. Now, um, and you set it to true and false basically. Now, as you can see right here, this is what we're doing. We're setting can collides and transparencies to one. So this is what I mean by we're basically making this door go visible. Now you could do an animation, but that's a little bit harder. So th this was the easiest and kind of the personally the best way. So I hope you guys did enjoy this tutorial. If you did, please feel free to hit that subscribe button and turn on that post notifications, you guys. Um, I'm sorry about the late po post and just not too many going on. I'm making a huge game right now for Dora, um, the Explorer, <laughs> Junelle. Um, and I have another company I'm working with, so I'm really, really tight on schedule. And I'm also going out of town next week. So, yeah, I'm just really busy. But love you guys. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.